All right, here's a video that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. It's going to be subs and various sub configurations. Now, most people will run their subs in stereo because your system sort of dictates that. You have two subs with a pole and then two tops for your system. And, you know, that's the average system that we use, whether we're a DJ or a small band or a club. And this first picture shows you what that looks like in a SPL plot. In this particular plot, we're showing my rig, which has eight subs, four per side in a left-right configuration. Those subs are DB Technologies S30s. They have 141 DB Max SPL, and they are 3,000-watt RMS, 6,000-watt peak on each speaker. So the SPL plot below is based on those volumes. And obviously, you can see on the left-hand side graph that we're up to 150 decibels with uh, that system at max SPL. So this is what the actual volume looks like of your subs at various locations in your space or outdoors. Left-right configuration, unfortunately, happens to be the worst configuration, or at least one of the worst configurations you can put your subs in. And it's simply because of all of the cancellation that occurs out in the front field of the speakers. You'll see that we're extremely hot right in front of each speaker. We have three power alleys, and we've got two major power valleys just off center. So if you're mixing at 60 to 75 feet out in front of stage and move a little to your left or right, you step directly into one of the main power valleys, and it sounds like your subs are completely gone. So I won't go into all the technical details of what's going on. I just want to visually describe and show you what's going on and what other configurations you can use and see how much better they are. So the other problem with anything that is a standard configuration, which would be left, right, center, left, right, center, you can see that you've got equal amount of power going behind the subwoofers. So the next option that I see a lot that we, we all use is left, center, right. And that's usually so you can get a more consistent base coverage across the stage. And that happens to be the second worst option that you can go with. You see, obviously, now you have a hot spot down the middle, but you've got two really bad lobes right in the center, about 25 to 30 feet from stage. And then hopefully, back at mixed position, you're getting a little bit of sub there. So left, center, right is another really bad configuration. Again, you may not have any options, but just realize what it looks like. You've created a lot of phase cancellation, power alleys, power valleys, lobes, uh, not good. And we still have a lot of energy going on stage and behind stage. So another configuration that we look at is center. And that would be to take all of your speakers across the front of stage. And a lot of people are doing that these days just because they realize it's, it's a much better option. And you get a much more even coverage out front. You can see that the lobes or the valleys are way off left and right. But again, we have quite a bit of energy going onto stage and behind stage. So if we change that slightly into what we call a line, a line is going to be dictated by particular features of your cabinet and spacing between the cabinet. You are really starting to get rid of those lobes now and you're getting a much more smooth coverage across the entire width of your line. And you can tell up here that it's you know, it's pretty consistent. Obviously, it's a lot hotter right up front, but it's very, very consistent in the primary audience position in front of house. So all of those configurations, anyone can do without any special DSP and, and knowledge of how to configure a cardioid or in-fire system, which is where we're going to go next. Cardioid is going to dictate that we take some of our speakers and face them backwards delay them, and invert the phase. So in this configuration, we usually run 12 subs. It's going to have eight facing forward and four facing backwards. The four facing backwards will have their timing delayed from front to back, and it'll have the phase inverted on those. And again, without getting into the reasons why this works, let's take a look at what it looks like, and you can clearly see that what we're getting is the smoothest coverage yet, we are getting some rear and side rejection from stage and the side and off to the back. So we are really starting to get that energy focused more forward. And you'll see that the hot spot now is a lot larger out front. So cardioid is one of the more popular configurations. The last configuration is by far the best configuration, but it's the hardest to pull off and it's called in-fire. And if you look at the top of the diagram, you'll see that we have two rows of subs across the center. We don't have any phase uh, being adjusted. We're just timing 
the front row to the back row by delaying it, in this case, by four milliseconds from the front to back. And here we have maximum rejection of sub information on stage. And you can clearly see that there's hardly anything going on on stage. And if you've never heard that before and you go on stage, you will think your subs are not working. It's amazing. You literally may be hitting 150 decibels in front of that cluster there. But if you're on the back side of stage, you're around 100 to 110 decibels. And that is a huge difference between 150 and 100 to 110. You will think something's wrong because you're used to having all that information on stage. So I just wanted to present that information. We have left, right, left, center, right. We have center. We have a line. We have cardioid. And of course, we've got the best option, which is in fire. So if you have any questions, let us know on our Facebook or YouTube pages.